A scissor lift is a useful device on a school campus. It can be used by employees to access heights that are too high for a ladder to reach or when erecting and moving a scaffold is not feasible. One of the biggest advantages of using a scissor lift is that it's easily maneuverable in a tight space. Safety and stability are also factors in choosing to use a scissor lift versus a ladder or other device. For example, a maintenance worker may need to paint trim on the second story of a building, change a light bulb on a light post in the parking lot, or hang artwork or props from a high ceiling in the auditorium. In these instances, a scissor lift provides convenient access to areas where the use of ladders would be impossible or unsafe. Maintenance, facilities, and custodial staff members are the most likely employees to operate a scissor lift. However, other staff may need to use a lift as well. When used correctly, scissor lifts offer safe, stable access to heights. Unfortunately, a scissor lift can be a dangerous piece of equipment when it's used incorrectly. Each year, dozens of people die when using lifts. As a result, it's mandatory that any staff member using a scissor lift carefully follow all required safety procedures for the model of lift they're using. Many accidents and deaths associated with scissor lifts are the result of the following safety violations. Untrained or unauthorized employees or others operating a lift. In a school setting, it's especially important that only trained and authorized employees use a scissor lift. Teachers, parents, or students may be willing and eager to help with projects and try to operate a scissor lift. Never allow them to do so. Employees falling off of the lift often without having any or the correct fall protection equipment on. The scissor lift tipping over. Scissor lifts have a small footprint, so they're more prone to tipping over. Three-fourths of all scissor lift tip-overs have resulted in fall deaths. Contact with live electrical wires, which could result in electrocution. And the scissor lift encountering a leading edge, uneven surface or a hole and the person on the lift platform being thrown out. This course provides staff members with an overview of important safety procedures to follow when operating a scissor lift. This course is not intended to replace hands-on training for the specific scissor lift that you will be using on the job. You must receive hands-on training on the safe use of the specific model of lift at your school from a qualified trainer. Optimally, operational training should come from the manufacturer of the lift or an OSHA-compliant training program. You should never use your school's scissor lift without the knowledge and approval of your supervisor. The goal of this course is to provide school staff members with an overview of procedures regarding the safe operation of scissor lifts and policies that will help ensure safety. In this course, you will learn about scissor lift basics, training requirements, inspection and maintenance requirements, safe operation procedures, and summary of safety policies. Afterward, you'll have the opportunity to test what you've learned with a short quiz. So if you're ready, let's get started. A scissor lift has crisscross braces that are attached to a base that's on wheels, usually with a motor and controls. The lift gets its name from the scissor action associated with the braces raising an enclosed platform to the proper height. Here are some basic facts you should know about scissor lifts. A scissor lift can only extend vertically. It cannot extend horizontally or diagonally. The upward motion of a scissor lift is achieved by the application of pressure to the outside of the lowest set of supports, which elongates the crisscross pattern and propels the work platform vertically. The platform may have an extending bridge on it, which allows closer access to the work area. Scissor lift models can lift to elevations starting at 15 feet and up to approximately 88.5 feet, depending on the type of lift. And, scissor lifts are usually self-propelled by a motor. The motor can be a combination of diesel-electric, all-electric, or propane. Electric models are often used in enclosed spaces where it's too dangerous to use a diesel-powered lift because of the fumes that are released. The advantage of a scissor lift over other lifts is its larger working platform and higher lifting capacities. 
The lifting capacity of any scissor lift is determined by its manufacturer. Check the lift operator's manual or the capacity plates on the lift to learn about the capacity of your lift. It's also a good idea to check with your supervisor if you have any concerns or questions about your lift's load capacity. There are more types of scissor lifts than most people realize. Slab scissor lifts maneuver well in tight spaces. They work for both indoor and outdoor projects where there's a firm, level surface, although they're typically used for indoor work. This type of lift typically runs on electricity because of its use indoors. Personnel lifts are the smallest type of scissor lift. They have a very small footprint, so they're used when space is limited and the floor load is restricted. They can also be set up quickly. Because of their small size, personnel lifts can usually only carry one person. Rough terrain scissor lifts are useful when working on rough terrain, such as a construction site. They have four-wheel drive to help them get across rough ground, as well as four large outriggers that level the lift on uneven ground. This type of lift normally runs on diesel fuel to help maneuver it across rough terrain. Specialist scissor lifts have an extra long reach, up to 88.5 feet, and are usually found in industrial and construction settings. In a school setting, slab and personnel scissor lifts would most likely be used. OSHA has regulations involving the safe operation of all lifts and mobile scaffolding, including scissor lifts. Carefully read the instruction manual for your scissor lift. Also, be sure to follow your certified instructor's training to make sure your use of a scissor lift meets OSHA standards. It's tempting to bring up a large amount of gear or workers on your scissor lift to get a job done. However, you must know the load limits of the lift you're working on and never overload the platform. This could result in a serious tipping accident. Don't operate a scissor lift without hands-on training from an instructor qualified to train staff members. Only employees who have received training on the inspection, application, and operation of a scissor lift, including hazard management, should operate one. Your school should keep records of employee training on your scissor lift. Among the required topics to be taught for scissor lift operation, users must be trained on how to perform a pre-start inspection, including both an equipment inspection and a workplace inspection. The steps for completing an equipment inspection are covered in the mandated training for the particular lift you'll be using. Additionally, employees who operate scissor lifts must be trained on the responsibilities associated with problems or malfunctions affecting the operation of the lift, factors affecting the stability of scissor lifts, the purpose of placards and decals on the lift, applicable safety rules and regulations, such as the National Electric Safety Code, procedures required by your school to obtain authorization to operate a scissor lift, warnings and instructions issued by the operator, the actual operation of the scissor lift, and the proper use of fall protection equipment when using a lift. Two types of inspections are required for scissor lifts, frequent inspections and periodic inspections. A frequent inspection must be performed prior to use every time the scissor lift is operated. This inspection is done by the person operating the lift. A periodic inspection should occur according to your district's policies and the lift manufacturer's recommendations. Depending on the lift, the periodic inspection may be required as often as each month or as infrequently as once a year. As part of a frequent inspection on a scissor lift, these checks must be made. Check operating controls and associated mechanisms for conditions interfering with proper operation. Check visual and audible safety devices for malfunctions. Check hydraulic or pneumatic systems for deterioration or excessive leakage. Check fiberglass and other insulating components for visible damage or contamination. And check for missing or illegible operational and instructional markings. Additional checks that should be made as part of a frequent inspection include the following. 
Check electrical systems for malfunction, signs of excessive deterioration, dirt, and moisture accumulation. Perform a visual inspection of all bolts, pins, fasteners, and locking devices for looseness or deformation. Rusted and broken fasteners can cause serious equipment malfunction. Any suspected items should be examined and tested by a qualified person. This person must determine if the items are a safety hazard. And all unsafe items must be replaced or repaired before the lift can be used again. Your school must keep written records of each frequent inspection conducted, as required by American National Standards Institute, or ANSI. If a safety violation is found during a frequent inspection, it must be reported in writing. Additionally, any repairs made to the lifts must be documented and kept on file. Periodic inspection requirements for a scissor lift are more comprehensive. Even small parts, such as locking pins, need to be checked in a periodic inspection. A periodic inspection should occur on 1 to 12 month intervals, as determined by your school or district and the lift manufacturer's recommendations. Periodic inspections should be coordinated by your school's or district's maintenance director. Check the owner's manual for inspection requirements. If you're a school employee and have any concerns or questions about the maintenance of your scissor lift, do not use the equipment. Instead, you should contact your maintenance director immediately. Written, dated, and signed reports must be kept for each periodic inspection. Records must be kept for at least five years or as required by applicable regulations. Doing your job in a safe and competent manner is your number one priority. Safely operating the scissor lift is no exception. Failure to properly plan, prepare, and use the lift safely can result in injury to you or others around you. The drive and lift functions of a scissor lift are controlled by an operator. Scissor lifts have control stations located on the work platform and at the base of the unit. Having controls at different locations on the lift acts as a safety feature. In a situation where an operator is on the platform but unable to operate the controls, the unit can still be operated from the base or a remote. Most models of scissor lifts are fitted with an emergency switch. This allows the manual lowering of the lift, usually by the release of hydraulic or pneumatic pressure, in the event of an emergency or power failure. Consult the operator's manual of your particular lift to acquaint yourself with all of the controls, including the emergency switch. Remember, to operate a scissor lift safely, you should receive hands-on training by a qualified trainer teaching an OSHA-compliant course. Your lift should have certain markings on it. These markings include Equipment identification, such as the make, model, and serial number of the lift. Operational markings. And instructional markings. Every time the scissor lift is used, it must be inspected prior to use. This means that you must perform a pre-start inspection in accordance with your district's frequent inspection requirements. If any equipment parts are found to be damaged or operating unsafely, they must be replaced or repaired before operating the lift. Before using a scissor lift outdoors, be sure to check weather conditions. A lift should not be used when rain has made its platform hazardous and slippery, or if rain has created muddy conditions that may impact the lift's stability or maneuverability. Also, do not use a scissor lift during storms, high winds, or if lightning is present. Before a scissor lift is used, the surrounding work area must be surveyed for hazards such as untamped earth fills, potholes and ditches, drop-offs and floor obstructions, debris, overhead obstructions, possible electrical contacts, and the presence of unauthorized persons. Unless these hazards are managed or eliminated, you should not use the scissor lift. Falling objects are always a hazard when a scissor lift is part of the job. To protect yourself and others from falling objects, follow these safety guidelines. 
Although it's not an ANSI requirement to wear a hard hat when operating or working near a scissor lift, it's always a good idea. This is especially true if you know that fall hazards will likely be a part of the job you're doing. If there's a danger of falling objects from the lift platform, the area below must be barricaded and or cordoned off to prevent people from entering the work area. And, loose tools and other items on the platform must be restrained to prevent them from falling or getting kicked off. Keeping them in a bucket or other secure container is an easy solution. Given the temporary nature of scissor lifts in the school setting, they need to be moved from their place of storage to where they will be used each time. When a scissor lift is moved, the driver or operator must use the following safety procedures. Avoid any surface that affects the lift's stability, such as rugged ground, wet or muddy ground, or sloped surfaces. Maintain a safe distance from obstacles and overhead power lines. Maintain communication between the driver and operator, if they're two different people. Limit the speed of the lift or other vehicle moving the lift to a rate that's safe for the surface conditions. A scissor lift can easily tip over while carrying a safe load, if the vehicle is driven too fast or turned too quickly. The safest practice is to always move or drive an aerial lift slowly and carefully. Be aware that hitting another object while moving a scissor lift can cause a person or any objects on the platform of the lift to be thrown off. And finally, always make the right choice to put safety first when moving a scissor lift. The majority of scissor lift deaths occur because the lift machine is improperly moved or braced and loses its stability. The stability of a scissor lift is crucial to avoid it tipping over. There are certain working requirements that must be fulfilled in order for a scissor lift to be used safely on a job site. These include the following. Employees must stand on the floor of the basket and cannot sit or climb on the edges or use other devices to establish work positions. Guardrails must be installed on a scissor lift. If the manufacturer or your district requires it, fall protection should be worn while on a scissor lift. Never exceed the load capacity of the lift. Allow for the combined weight of the worker, tools, and materials. Maintain a minimum distance of 10 feet from overhead power lines and always treat power lines, wires, and other conductors as if they're energized. The parking brake on the lift must be set while the boom is elevated. And finally, use outriggers on the lift to stabilize it, if they're provided. Scissor lifts can be used safely on a school campus. There are two key requirements for their safe use in the school environment. You must carefully follow the safety and training requirements described in this course and understand the unique factors that make a school setting different than, for example, a typical construction site. Let's review the most important of these requirements, as well as consider some special considerations that are unique to a school setting. Anyone operating a scissor lift must receive hands-on training from a qualified trainer and be certified on the model of the lift to be used before they're allowed to operate the lift. No one may use a scissor lift on school grounds without the knowledge and permission of the school's administration. Never allow students to operate a scissor lift or stand in or on a scissor lift, ever. Minors may not ride or stand on a scissor lift. Never allow untrained parents, staff, or volunteers to operate or stand in or on a scissor lift. For example, an untrained sports videographer or an untrained band leader may not operate or stand on a school's scissor lift. If you aren't sure if a scissor lift is in safe condition, don't use it. Instead, contact your maintenance director immediately. An inspection must be performed before each use of the lift. The person operating the lift is responsible for conducting this inspection. If you're unsure whether a periodic inspection has been conducted on a scissor lift, check with your maintenance director before operating it. Anyone who is being elevated by a scissor lift must wear properly secured fall arrest equipment. Hard hats should be worn when operating a scissor lift or standing on a lift platform. Employees working underneath a scissor lift should also wear hard hats for protection from falling objects. 
If there's a danger of objects falling from the lift platform, the area around the platform must be barricaded and or cordoned off with cones. A careful workplace inspection must be done to check for hazards prior to using a scissor lift. Scissor lifts should not be used outdoors in high winds, rain, lightning, or other dangerous weather conditions. This includes use during outdoor activities, such as sports coaching, sports photography, and supervising a marching band. The scissor lift may only be operated on a flat, stable surface. And, if you aren't sure if conditions are safe, don't use a scissor lift. From this course, you should be able to Demonstrate basic knowledge of scissor lifts and their operation Understand the training required to operate a scissor lift and that you must never operate a lift without the proper training Grasp the importance of inspections and regular maintenance of a scissor lift in your school Describe key steps and practices to safely operate a scissor lift and know the safety policies for scissor lifts as they pertain to school employees. Review these points and repeat this course if needed.